When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in the room. And then let's look at verse number 17. It said, um, 217. It shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour out my spirit upon all. Now, all flesh, the semicolon, now he's describing the kind of flesh. And he said, your sons and your daughters will what? Prophesy. Look at this. So, sons and daughters do what? Prophesy. Sons and daughters do what? Prophesy. Now, he was speaking to the 120 in the room, that the 120, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, the result of the fire of the Holy Ghost coming upon you that you will, you will not just be prophesying. Your sons, your spiritual sons, your biological sons and daughters will prophesy. And your young men will see vision. So the Holy Spirit gives you, the young people the ability to see into the future. Many people are visionless in life because they don't have the Holy Spirit. At age 12, Jesus knew his purpose. At your age, you don't know your purpose. I heard somebody teach, a pastor teach on radio, and he said, it's not easy to know your purpose. Purpose here yeah, is not the reason for marriage. And you are teaching on marriage. At 45, you don't know your purpose. Jesus needs his purpose at 12. 12! I can give you, Joseph knew his purpose by 13 years. Of course, Moses knew his purpose after 40 years. So, <laughs> I'm not talking to somebody at all. So if you are below 40 or after 40, may you have the mind. If you don't have the mind of the young, you can't have vision. If you behave like an old lady or an old man, I will teach you what will happen to you. You will dream. <laughs> young people must have visions. What is a vision? A mental picture of your future. The ability to use your brain to imagine the greatness of your life. Without even you being there saying, I was there and God told me. That is different. A prophet told sons and daughters who prophesy. A prophet told me I will be great. That is different. But a vision is when you sit down and you plan your greatness. Under the auspices of the Holy Spirit. Nobody has told you. Nobody believes in you to prophesy on you. Nobody believes in you to prophesy on you. So you'll be there. You are waiting. God, when will they come? Every day the prophets guess you. They jump. Forty people are going to become great in the auditorium. Everybody falls down minus you. So when will you also make it in life? You say, God, today they touch me some. Touch me some. He has not touched you. I don't even understand what I'm saying here. So you wonder, this thing, is it true? You are supposed to have visions. Amen? Yeah. And they say, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall... And the reason why old men shall dream dreams is that when you grow old, you like sleeping. A sign that you are old is you sleep. You sit down now, you will sleep. Oh, it's true. You are, how many people who grow old, they sleep? The sign of old age is sleep. If you are young and you are... Anytime people are talking, you are sleeping, you are old. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Have you tried to speak to our grandfathers and our grandmothers and old people before? When you start, when they ask you a question and you start going around, they sleep. And interestingly, when you start going to the answer, they wake up. Is it true? As you are talking, are you not getting married? Oh, daddy, you see. Uh, there's this lady I met. Uh -huh, you said this lady. <laughs> Uh, that place is working up. The rest, he is not interested. He's not interested in the runabout you are going. He doesn't. He's not interested in the details. So now look at this thing. Prophecy comes from what? Sons and come from what? Sons and daughters. Young men do what? See visions. Old people do what? So which of the categories are you in? Now let's move on. And on my maid servants and on my maid servant. It didn't say your. The maid servants and my maid servants. He's talking about men of God, not your house boy. On my. I will pour out 
my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. May you, as a servant of God, also prophesy. Amen. May you see visions. Amen. If you are old, may God party you with dreams. <laughs> I always tell people who sleep that there's no problem if you sleep, but if you sleep, dream good dreams. Joseph was a dreamer because he slept. Nobody who can dream if you don't sleep. But you, when you dream, you see cockroaches and lizards chasing us. At least when you dream, dream and show us where the money is so that we can go for it. <laughs> How many of you agree with me here? So, so Pharaoh, what to solve problems? Call Nanado and tell Nanado, Nanado, there's a dream you had. The dream you don't understand it. Let me come and show you. How Ghana's economy can change in 13 days. And on condition that there is, that when we give you the 10, 50% is mine, 50% is yours. I said, no, no, I don't say, okay, let's see. We sign document, everything within a short. You I always say that you are staying with your boss. Business is not going on. You don't see vision. You don't have dreams. And you say you have Holy Ghost. I don't believe you have Holy Ghost until I see this evidence in your life. Look, I'm always saying this. I, I don't know your heart, too, but I know your result. And I will use your result to determine you. You can tell me you've gone to university. I won't believe it until I see the result of your life. You don't go to university and you behave like a day nursery people. Am I teaching somebody here at all? Or oh, your amen is no good at all? Amen. Oh, amen. amen. So you realize that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he gives you a lot. And if you watch through history, you will notice that a lot of the development of medicine, science, penicillin, all those things came after the day of Pentecost. Industrialization came after the day of Pentecost. Because the coming of the Holy Spirit upon us gave us light and understanding into things that we don't understand. So I teach people this thing that Waiting on God is when you can go and present your case to God and say, God, I don't understand why this thing doesn't work. Why is that I go up and I come down? God tells you, resource, you are using the law of what? Gravity. Let me teach you about the law of aerodynamics. And the people who brought the plane were Christians. They were people who spent time with God. And God showed them that this law can be broken. There is a way. Go to your research. They were Christians. The first people to teach us on the law of aerodynamics that a plane, something can fly and not come down. They were Christians. But it takes you going to God in prayer to say, God, I don't understand why this thing goes on in this world. How do I change it? And the Holy Spirit said, Now let's talk. Let me take you on a tour. Oh, amen. amen. Oh, your amen is not good at all. Amen. Yo, I said your amen is not good at all. Amen. So, when there's an agreement with you, the Holy Spirit has a way of working faster with you. In another, another development, you will also know that you can also be um, having disagreement with yourself, and so the Holy Spirit is not working through you. How? When your body and your spirit are not working together. You are living in sin, but your spirit is living holy. I don't know whether you understand that English. This flesh is sinning. This same mouth you will use to prophesy, you are using to curse. I was talking to a pastor, and I said, you know why your church will never grow? You always open your mind and say, look at the kind of useless work God has brought to me. I said, me, I tell people, my pastors are the richest in the world. My members are the best in the world. So, Pastor, are you telling the truth? I'm speaking the truth. I'm not telling. I'm prophesying the truth. I speak what I want, not what I'm seeing. Does it mean that they all are making it? Pastor, some are really struggling. It's not easy. <laughs> but I must speak what I want. And the Holy Ghost doesn't stay on you for you to speak evil. Because at the end of the day, the Bible said that do not catch the king even in your heart, for the bed of the air will hear it and go and tell him. What it simply means that even when the Holy Ghost is inside you or there's a demon inside you, when even you think, they carry the information around. 
So if the Holy Spirit is inside you, all you're taught is how to seduce women. How to seduce men. You are, why don't you use that brain to talk about how to make money? Get away, they're meaning by the end of the year. And you sit down and you plan it. And the Holy Ghost said, my spirit will not strive with you continually. Because man's, man's thought is what? Genesis chapter 8. Man's thought is evil from the day of his youth. You are supposed to see vision, oh youth. But your thought is so clouded with evil. Now the Holy Spirit does not stay with you. Because your thought doesn't think well. No, no, no. Genesis chapter 8. I said when I quote, listen to me. It's Genesis 8. 2021 20, there. 20, Genesis 8, 9, I've forgotten. Get, take me up. Okay, read, go. And the Lord smelled what? A soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for the man's sake. Although the imagination of a man's is evil from youth. You are supposed to see vision. You are thinking wrong. So God said, from uh, now will I again destroy a believing thing. So God said, I will never again dwell with you. So the Holy Spirit is left there because he's, when he comes upon you, you are supposed to use it to dream dreams, see great things, become better in life, not to operate in witchcraft. Witchcraft is destroying things, pulling people down, not making other people successful. Pulling people are down for you to become successful is witchcraft. And the Holy Spirit will not strive with you. Because I was saying yesterday, there's too many fish in the sea for you to think that your boat can take them all. And there's so much space in the air for you to think that you can occupy it all. There's enough for everybody. So one day, let me end on this because there's no time. One day, First Samuel 16. Saul, First Samuel chapter 9, chapter 10, has been anointed. He began to do his own thing outside God. Whatever God tells him, he does it opposite. Because I'm a king. Pass here. And one of the things God doesn't like, I keep teaching this, is when you have him and you live your own life. So to cut a long story short, one day the prophet told him, rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. Being disobedient to rules and regulations is witchcraft. Deciding to disobey intentionally is bayfoism. For rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. I know I have to do this. I won't do it. You are a witch. You are a wizard. And stubbornness is idolatry. Was what dear? Was what dear? When you be hiding, say was what dear? We are both some some dear. I'm teaching the Bible, and you are happy to say they are many, many, many was what dear. It takes time for me to change. It means that you know very well. Let's move on. Am I teaching well? So the Bible said, the spirit, first Samuel 16, God told someone, go and anoint somebody else. Because my spirit must work. The Holy Spirit must work. Look, sometimes I don't know what people think that they think that the whole world must wait for them because they are not ready. <laughs> God doesn't live by your time. He lives by his time. So if you are not ready, he's ready. So Saul, move away. He looks for a young man by name David. And as soon as they poured the oil on David, the Bible said, the Spirit of the Lord came on David and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented Saul. Opposite. Because when the Spirit is lifted from you, the same thing that is supposed to help you begins to torment you. That is why you should not have the Holy Spirit and go wayward. Because that same anointing can be so tormenting. Oh, amen? Read. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and the distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. Distressing. Always tired. Always tired of giving, doing things for yourself and God. You can't even have, and I told you people yesterday, you are sweating with God. He's gone. 
and David goes to kill Goliath. We all know the story. Instead of Goliath, David being, and Saul being happy, at least he has a son-in-law in the making who at least if the anointing has lifted for me, he's marrying my daughter. So at least our, my grandchild can be the next king. One of the signs for you to know that somebody doesn't have the Holy Spirit anymore is jealousy. Saul became jealous of David. You see, one of the things about the Holy Spirit being on you is that you are unique. You can't copy somebody. You are, you are too original. Saul hated David. The same person who clapped for him yesterday tried to pin him to the wall with a javelin. So by 1 Samuel chapter 19, that's why I said I play with some 19s today. When David was talking to Jonathan, and Jonathan said, my father likes you, he doesn't really hate you, so I went and talked to him. So Jonathan went to David and, and went to Saul and said, Saul, this boy has fought for us, he's won war for us. Why do you hate him? This guy doesn't hate you. Saul said, oh, don't worry, I don't know, but I like him. Let him come to the house and stay with us as usual. So David comes there, playing the harp for the man, like the way you are playing the instrument for me. And I see the way people are praising him. I want to kill them. So he nearly killed David. David ran away. And when David ran away, the Bible said he went to visit his spiritual father, the one who anointed him. What do I mean? He went to his source. I love this story. You see, every time you realize that you are going under so much attack for nothing, for nothing, for just nothing, you are just being who you are, it's time to visit your stronghold. It's time to pull your kukunkaka down and go for a higher impartation. So the Bible said he went to Rama at Neoth. So David escaped and went to Samuel at Rama and told all that Saul had done to him. So you went to your pastor, you went to tell him. And he and Samuel went and stayed in Neoth. I wish I can teach you about Neoth and Rama, but not today. They stayed there. It's like the word Neoth is like tarried, it's a place you wait. They stayed there. And Bible said, when Saul had that David and his Samuel were in the place of waiting, he sent like 50 soldiers. I want to kill this man myself. Go and carry him and bring him to me. The Bible said, when the 50 people got there, as soon as they saw Samuel and David, they began to speak in tongues. Read your Bible. Give me the NLT version. It makes the way they started speaking gibberish. Gibberish. Strange people don't understand. When you get into a stronghold, messengers that are sent against you will become your partners. <laughs> they were sent to spy on you. They end up telling you why they came. One of my daughters after church on Sunday last week sent me a message. I'm dying, you know. I'm dying, you know. I said, what is this? Call me. So we were talking. He said, I've been bringing my daughter to Sunday school, my maid to Sunday school. This evening, the maid confessed that she is a witch. He said, uh -huh. And she has decided to tell her all that they said she should come and do, and she can't do it. There is a way the presence of God can saturate an atmosphere. If a man's ways pleases the Lord, he maketh his enemies even to be at peace with him. They sent him to come and capture David and bring him. 
They started speaking gibberish. Let's read. Go. And he sent what? Troops to. But when they arrived and saw someone leading a group of prophets who were prophesying, the Spirit of God came upon Saul's men and they also began to prophesy. As you spend time with God, may your enemies prophesy for your good. Amen. That is when they go there and they say, David, you are, you are going to be king. David, your kingdom will be forever. We came to kill you. Oh, it happened. When Balaam wanted to curse Israel, he ended up blessing them. You were hired. You've been paid one million dollars to curse people. You are here. And the king said, I don't like that. I brought you here to curse them. He said, listen, he who God has blessed, I can't curse. For there is no divination or enchantment against Jacob. But let me tell you one thing. But the Balaam did one thing. That finished them. And if I in church, let me tell you this. Balaam told the prophet that I can't curse them, but there's one thing I can do. If you, if you let them do it, they are going to be angry. Let your men go and seduce the woman. And let your woman seduce the men. And let them have sex. God will be angry. And that day, when the people move into the camp, 24,000 people were killed. And that's one of the first time that they started slowing down their pace towards their destiny. Sin, fornication, is a masterpiece for slowing down your destiny. God will forgive you, but you have demonic attacks. God will forgive you, but your dream will restart every day. You will always go see, say, You are always a beginner. There's no end in your life. So when you carry a oh, I think, let me <laughs> when you carry a presence, don't be deceived that oh God will forgive me. You realize that you are you are very anointed, but you are going nowhere. You are going nowhere. Oh, you are not here at all. <laughs> I think I'm not preaching it. So, the second one, you can see that Saul waited. These people didn't come. The army he sent to go and capture David, he did not return. They have become church members. So, he sent another set. Don't give up. The devil doesn't give up. Another troop. When they also got there, when Saul had, had happened, he sent other troops, but they too prophesied the same thing happened a third time. So, in other words, he sent people three times. First army, Second army, third army, and each one when they got there, they gave their life to Jesus. They became part of David's army. They, they this is how David built his army. <laughs> People were sent to kill you. May the presence of the Lord saturate your home, your life, your business. That whoever has been sent to you will be neutralized against you. May they turn the sword against their own enemies. May your enemy become your friend. But you are not here at all. Come and give the Lord a magic clap of. Now, verse 22. So Saul himself decided that if my troops have disappointed me, I will go myself. So he should gather an army. Let's go. Maybe they have been deceived. I know how to deal with this David and this Samuel. You see, sometimes when foolishness comes into you, you think I'm fight even your father. <laughs> Finally, Saul himself went to Ramah and arrived at the great wall, well, in Siku. Where are Samuel and David? Where are they? Look at the king. Where are these people? I want them. He demanded they had Neoth in Ramah. Neoth is a place of time. But on the way to New York in Ramah, he didn't even get there. As for Saul, he didn't get there. He didn't even arrive in the temple. When he got to Anya Market, <laughs> when they got to your junction, as soon as they saw your gate. But on the way to New York in Ramah, the Spirit of God came up even upon Saul. And he too began to prophesy all the way to the So at the junction, Saul began. Read on. He tore off his clothes. Embarrassing night. And lay naked on the ground all day and all night, prophesying in the presence of Samuel. The people who were watching exclaimed, What? 
is even Saul a prophet? Now, give me, is it message Bible form? Verse 23 and 24. Okay, let's read. As he headed out for north in Ramah, the Spirit of God was on him to all the way to New York. He was caught up in what? A babbly trance. He ripped off his clothes and laid dead rambling gibberish. <laughs> rambling gibberish. What is rambling gibberish? That is when the people, they've been sent to catch you. They are there to kill you. They see your glory and they decide to part of you. Moses spent time with God when he came down from the mountain and raised us over 200 meters. Nobody could be around him if you can fall down. People could not look at his face. So if I'm the devil, I'm going to do everything possible to prevent you from waiting for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. Because when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, Acts 1 8, it shall make you powerful. When you become powerful, no enemy can defeat you. Can you 